Welcome to the Oracle Apex Tutorial 4, Forum Layout Part 2 Video Training Exercise brought to you by MS Consulting. On the screen is the list of assumptions and requirements, as well as the location of the full article with in depth information. This part of this tutorial focuses on attributes, item alignment, setting footers, and dealing with conditional settings for regions. Okay, we're going to pick right up where we left off from from part one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here to our items. And we are going to say, so edit all. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be editing uh, whether or not an item is displayed on a new line and whether and uh, what its width is. The list of this information is available in the full article, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to basically going to be going down the list of rows and making uh, small edits to them. Primarily we'll be changing the width of the first, middle, and last name. We're also going to make sure that the middle and last name do not start on a new line. And the employee floor part time becomes a width of two. The employee salary we can shorten down to ten. Employee department we shorten down to 15. Employee hire date becomes 10. Employee manager does not start on a new line and that becomes a width of 15. The employee telecommute becomes 2, and the employee create date and update date will both become 10 characters wide. Then when we're done with this, we'll scroll back up and we'll hit apply changes. And then we'll hit run page and you can see the changes we made. Now you see that the employee's name all appears on one line and the hire date and employee manager appear on one line. It's a little easier to use but it is still spread out. So we'll go change some of the alignment settings. There's a couple ways you can actually set the alignment. We're going to be doing a rather visual way. Under items we're going to click this small box which is the visual drag and drop layout setup. This shows you in a graphical way the way uh, different elements of the page are set up. As you can see on the left hand side are icons for pretty much all of the item types that you can have and that you can use. And What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down a little bit here and we're going to pick this one right here. It says start and stop table and we're going to click and drag it up to next to the P2 employee ID and we're going to drop it there what that does is that issues a place for a HTML table. We'll click next and then we'll just check this real quick. Everything's okay. We'll say apply changes. And now we will uh, run the page again. Actually we're going to change the order of something first here. That's what this little up-down arrow means. It means you can change the order. Of any of the columns. What we're going to do is we're going to change the employee special info to be three columns wide. And click apply changes. Now we'll run the page. I apologize for that. And as you can see now the first, middle, and last name are a little closer together. 
and the employee special info still spans all the columns it needs to. I'm going to go back to edit page two and then we're going to come down here to where the create date is and what we're going to do is we're going to make this a hidden or I'm sorry a a text item that the user cannot change. So we're going to change it to text field disabled save state. This basically means that the user will be able to see it but they will not be able to change it or edit it. We're going to apply the changes for that. Then we're going to come down and we're going to do the same thing to the update date. Because these two pieces of information are actually more for auditing purposes. And we're editing them so that the user can't actually alter them, as I said before. Now we're going to go and we're going to create a new region and it's going to be a HTML region. Click Next. And normal HTML region container. Click Next. It's display attributes. We're going to give it a title of audit information. And we'll click Next. And then we'll click Create Region because everything else is OK. And there we go, we have audit information now. Now we're going to go to Items and click Edit All because what we're going to do is we're going to move some items into this new region we just created. We're going to come down here to the bottom for our Create Date and our Update Date. And you'll see the column that currently says Employee Info. We're going to drop that list down and select it to go into Audit Information. I'm going to click Apply Changes. I'm going to click Run Page. And as you can see now, below the primary form is the two fields for audit information. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Edit Page and we're going to put some footer information in into our new region. So under Regions, we'll click Audit Information. Then what we'll do is we'll scroll down to Region Header and Region Footer. And like the previous tutorial, this uh, information I'm about to paste in is available in the full article. So we'll paste in our, our text that we need. We'll come up here and we'll apply our changes. And we'll run the page. And you can see now that there's some footer information that tells you a little bit more about what th those two fields mean. Back to the edit page and we're going to go to regions, audit information and what we're going to do is we're going to make this region conditional. So we're going to click on the conditions and then we're going to set our conditions. In this case the value the condition is going to be set so that the value of the item in expression 1 is not null. And then we're going to paste the expression 1 into the box here, which is P2 EMP ID. Then we'll click Apply Changes. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. We'll see you in the next section.